Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Warm Blanket, the podcast where we embark on the journeys to see what makes us feel good about Star Trek, where is our love comes from and what it means for us. In short, what is our Warm Blanket? My name is Gary and I'm your host and I'm very lucky to welcome here a very special person to me, a good friend Sean from the popular channel, YouTube channel, Track on the Tube. He started his channel about three years ago and became a prominent member of the Star Trek community. His videos are entertaining, educational and fun to watch and I'm more than fortunate to call him a friend. Please everyone welcome Sean. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fine, how are you? That was, that was a bit too much. <laughs> too much? <laughs> Last time, last time I got it because I, a I it was too short. It's too long. <laughs> a prominent, prominent YouTuber. I don't know. You are a prominent member of the of the community for sure. Your your voice has always been always heard, always been heard. Okay, you're, you're kind by you, but okay. <laughs> so we we know each other how long? Three years now. Yeah. What since, three years? Um, yeah, since, since um since Irish Tricky. Damien throws together. Hashtag, hashtag Irish tricky. Hashtag yeah. Irish tricky. <laughs> so, obviously, um, we know each other um, for a while. Um, my listeners, whoever are going to listen to this um, new sort of um, endeavor that I and I'm embarked on, um, what can you share about yourself? Me, hmm? as um, a person. As a person, I don't know. I'm a father now. Um, I'm a husband. <laughs> um, I like Star Trek. I like movies. I watch movies all the time. Um, I work as a pastry chef. I've worked as a pastry chef for the past uh, 12 years now. And uh, that's pretty much my life, basically. That's, uh, that's, that's the family, that's the job, and that's, the, the, that, that's what I do for entertainment. Movies and TV shows. So, apart from Star Trek, obviously we're gonna get there too. Um, apart from Star Trek, what um, was the first love that you that you like, like you fell in love with? Either TV shows or, or um, or any movies that like paved the way to to Star Trek essentially. I don't think anything paved the way to Star Trek specifically because Star Trek was always there. Like as as a kid, I would watch, uh, you know, various different cartoons or movies or whatever. But Star Trek was always there. Because my mom was always watching The Next Generation and Voyager, and so I would always be seeing The Next Generation and Voyager. But I, I would watch things like The Mummy, the 1999 uh, movies with Brendan Fraser. Um, I love that. I would watch things like I don't know. I was into Cars when I was when I was younger, so I, I used to watch those Fast and Furious movies when they were about cars. I thought they were great. Um, and then I watched Gargoyles. Uh, the anim that animated show, which I've recently started rewatching, and I didn't realize there's so much trick in there. Like there's oh, Michael really? Dor Michael Dor does an appearance. Um, Marina Sotis is a main character, basically. Um, oh. Yeah, um, Jonathan Frakes is the main villain. Like there's <laughs> just so much uh, Star Trek talent in that show. Anyway, um, yeah, and I, I, I uh, Pixar movies. I grew up on Pixar movies. I grew up on the Toy Story. And Toy Story two and yeah. So it's really fair to say that basically your mom got into Star Trek, got you into Star Trek. Yeah, she's the one that got me into Star Trek. She was the one that like she she would watch Star Trek, but we would we we had um a portable TV set, like a small one, because um. My dad would watch whatever he's watching, like in in the in the living room, and she would be like, "No, nah, we're gonna watch Star Trek." So she'd take his <laughs> TV to the bedroom. And sit down and watch uh, the next generation or whatever. The funny thing is, this TV was black and white, so we would actually be watching the next generation or Voyager in black and white. Oh, that's like that's like some something really like the retro retro. <laughs> like not even no. not even original series in black and white. It's like Voyager in black and white. Like that, that was only for <laughs> that was only for like a few years though. Then, but um, that must have been so interesting. Um, for the first time when you seen them in color. I'd seen them in color, like, because when this is this is really long ago. I don't have too many um, memories of this. Like my my real memories, because like my so my parents got divorced when I was about uh, four, 
and so we moved I moved out with my mother like we moved out together and we got this little small little flat and there she bought like a new TV and that's really when we when I remember watching you know my first episodes of Star Trek the whole black and white thing is is what she um, told me I remember the, I remember the small TV it was like a small box TV really really small but anyway yeah no Star Trek Star Trek Voyager is what I remember the most, though I think it was The Next Generation that I must have seen first because somehow The Next Generation came out before I was born, whereas Voyager I think came out after. So I must have seen The Next Generation first. And in, in terms of, you know, once you got into Star Trek, did it affect your life in any any way or did you learn anything from Star Trek that, that as, as a kid growing up? Yeah, yeah, definitely. But you don't realize this until you're older. Like when you're when you when you are a kid and when you are watching these things, you kind of don't realize it. You're just sitting there, you're just watching the show, and, it, and it's just entertaining. But it's it's later on, um, as an adult, when we started doing these these discussions with Sohail, or when when I started, you know, talking about Star Trek to, because I'm one of those people that when I go see a movie, every time something happens, I'm like, oh well, that reminds me of something in Star Trek, doesn't it? Um, mm -hmm. So it's it's more as an adult you kind of reflect you think oh maybe I'm this way because Picard was like that or maybe I'm this way because Janeway inspired me to be this way you know what I mean yeah and you start looking at kind of all of the lessons that you've learned throughout the years with all of these episodes of Star Trek and the so yeah there's like lessons on a social level um, mm -hmm you know, accepting uh, diversity and what have you. Well, I don't like the word accepting, just embracing. Um, but there's also the, the kind of the curiosity. Like, I'm curious about all of these. I don't understand half of all of what's going on scientifically, but I'm curious about these new worlds. I'm curious about all of these different life forms, what have you. And I, I mean, I'm pretty sure that comes from Star Trek. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. I some I, I somehow I feel the same as well, in regards of you know, even though as a kid and even these days, there's uh, I'm watching an episode and I don't really understand what's happening in the screen, but in terms of techno babble, because there's just too much of it and <laughs> there's engineers and scientists. I'm pretty sure they have um have a massive orgasm or something to um <laughs> is it PG thirteen? <laughs> oh, I have to have to watch my language. Um, so yeah. <laughs> No, it's Voyager was very techno babble. That, yeah, that's that something I realized. I, I realized that as an adult because I did. I recently did like a full re. Well, I recently did. We started our full rewatch of Star Trek maybe five years ago now because we started with the original series and went through all of it. We're we're finally at Enterprise. Um, this is with my wife, and so I rewatched all of TNG as an adult and then all of Voyager as an adult. Um, uh, well, all of the all of the shows, but you real I realized that Voyager was he like heavily relying on techno babble, um, as much for the problems that they establish, uh, as well as the solutions that they find. But it's fine. I think I I don't know. It, it, it it's it's okay, as long as it sounds like something real, that's okay for me. It it as long as it doesn't seem like magic. If they explain it like it's something that's completely plausible, then I don't know. It, you get hooked. No, I think that's that's one of the essential part of, of course, getting getting hooked to hooked to a TV show that you know just always inspires you and, and makes your imagination go wild. Um, let's talk a little bit about your channel, um, just um, briefly. Yeah, what made you start your channel? Uh, Star Wars. Really? <laughs> that's in, no, that's a, a controversy. <laughs> in, in a way, in a way. No, it's um, I was. What's it called? What's the first one? I think it's called um, The Force Awakens, right? That episode seven. Anyway, the the first. I'm not sure about myself either. <laughs> okay, the first modern age Star Wars movie was going to come out, and I think it's The Force Awakens. It's episode seven, right? And I I realized that I had at that time I had never seen any Star Wars movies. I just wasn't interested in it, and I realized that like uh, this kind of Star Wars uh, culture was lacking. In me, and so I thought okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and check out these YouTube channels and see who can explain, you know, what what Star Wars is, and then I'll go and watch the movies. So what I did is I watched the first six movies, and then I started, 
you know, searching for channels that would explain Star Wars to me, and I realized that there were just so much. There were so many people out there explaining Star Wars, and I was like, why aren't there that many people explaining Star Trek? And then you realize that, that like, the channels that you're subscribed to or the people that I was following on Star Trek, they're, they're like, God bless their souls, I love them. Like, for example, Trek Yards, I think they're great, but they're very specific. And they they get you know they 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 really go into the detail of things and I'm thinking, this this is fine for me because I love Star Trek and um, I, I want to know about all of these details. But for someone that was in the position that I was with with Star Wars, where I just wanted to learn about you know the the grand picture, the grand scheme of things, like there's no channel out there for them. So I thought, why not why not start why not start a channel where I could talk about um, in the simplest way, kind of in the largest way possible. Uh, the different races that exist, or the different concepts like the Federation, or the different timelines, and try to explain Star Trek to to new fans, especially considering, um, well, it was called Star Trek 2017 at the time, but Discovery was going to come out. Mm-hmm. This new Star Trek show was going to come out, so I thought it's a perfect time. I thought this is, people are going to be searching for Star Trek, trying to understand what Star Trek is. And yeah, the channel morphed a bit because then it became reviews. Um, for Star Trek uh, Discovery, and Star Trek Discovery was so um, kind of, dare I say, in contradiction to what the rest of Star Trek was that um, my explanations, they weren't very useful <laughs> for Discovery no. specifically, but um, still, I don't know, and then it became, I did a bit of news, uh, continued the reviews, and and it enabled me mostly to, to to start doing all these discussions with with you guys, which is the most fun ever. <laughs> it is, it is. But uh, that being said, your your videos are amazing and entertaining all the time. I mean, um, I, I love Canon Cup. I'm I'm not sure how many of them <laughs> of the listeners are know um, and aware of Canon Cup, but um, if any of you are interested, please check out um, Sean's channel on on that regard. It's it's amazing. How did you come up with the How did you come up with that character? I don't know. It was Canon has become a big thing nowadays. Um, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. But I'm part of that. I'm part of the people that talk about Canon uh, regularly. Um, but then I, I realized that I kind of I don't know when there's an like a continuity issue or maybe something that doesn't it doesn't feel right in an episode. I realized that um, reviewing it. And then just talking about it can sometimes feel like a bit of a drag, right? It can sometimes bring your video, like the the mood of your video, down. Or sometimes it can feel like you're just complaining or what have you. And so I thought, like, I I, I know that I'm I'm the guy that complains, and I don't I don't want to you're be not. like that. I don't want to be the, the the guy that's too negative, right? So I thought, why not why not make it a fun kind of joke thing, where um, if I have a continuity issue, how about it not be me? And I used someone else to do that, someone else to explain it. So I thought, hey, let's let's come up with like a, a canon police department that sends over this canon cop. And so I had these fake mustaches lying around at home because I had, I got them for whatever Halloween. And I was like, this is perfect. I'm, I'm gonna go buy out. I'm gonna go go out and buy a, a, a police hat. Chuck that on. And there you go, it's canon cop. It's fun. He does, he hasn't had too many appearances yet. And the I funny thing is, I. Short track for sure. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, um, he came in too late because I, I, like, I had a lot of canon or continuity issues with Discovery season one and two, um, but I, I only created the canon cop when, uh, like, the second batch of short tricks came around, and then technically, like, there's nothing. I can't really complain about anything in Picard. Uh, from a continuity standpoint, like I can, I can maybe disagree with certain, you know, plot choices or whatever. But you can't really complain about canon in Picard because it's the future, right? It's the new show. Like they decide what what is new, right? So the canon cop had no appearances in any of the Picard reviews. Yeah, because it's all all new things. It's mm. not not that happened in the past. So yeah, that that does make sense. Yeah, when, and then and then you... Discovery season three is going on to the far future, so I guess he won't be doing any appearances there either. But anyway, we'll see. I'll find a way. I'll find a way to use him. You have to find a way. He he's amazing. So we <laughs> we need more of him. <laughs> 
Well, um, in regards of um, in regards of Star Trek, and um, as um, I mentioned um, in private, and of course in my pilot episode, this podcast is really um, about how Star Trek makes us feel, and what is your warm blanket. Um, when you're thinking about a Star Trek, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? I think Voyager. I I often think Voyager, um, and. I don't know. I like. I, people say that the characters are two-dimensional in Voyager, and I don't know. I love them. I love the characters of Voyager, and they make me feel happy. And if, I mean, as of late, there's been so many new TV shows that it, it's hard for me to just go back and rewatch an episode of 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 just an old show. But that was something that I did very very often. I would just go and rewatch an old an old episode of Star Trek, and it was often something Voyager related. It was like, oh. I want to watch this episode, um, just because I love these characters, or I, lo- I love the Doctor. You know. So, which, love... which character did you did you resonate with the most in Voyager? Um, I think Janeway is the one that inspired me the most, and she's like the ultimate captain, right? She's badass. She's I don't know. I love her. I love her so much. Um, but uh, being when when I was younger, I think the the younger elements of the crew, which was like uh, Harry Kim and Tom Paris, those were the kind of characters that resonated with me because they were like the two they were the two fun guys, you know. They were doing the Captain Proton, what have you. Uh, they were having fun, so I, I I you know be like, oh, I wish I was their friend. Yeah, which was interesting That's... actually rewatching as an adult because now that I have a wife and a baby watching Tom Paris's arc was interesting because like oh he went you know he was I used to see him as like the the young fun dude but now I saw him more as as um, a husband or uh, and a father figure I was like oh okay that's interesting your perception changes as life goes on right that's true that's very true that's 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 another thing that you know just just beautiful about the show itself that that no matter um, on what point of your life start to watching it and after watching it a few times and and getting back to it every now and then um, you find something find something totally different in it mm. I remember oh. watching them in the first time as well and I a lot of things that I, I I didn't didn't get at the beginning and I just realized it now watching it <laughs> watching it again it's crazy I'll tell you what you're gonna love this um Okay, so we moved to Canada uh, maybe three years ago now, um, and the first few months I was alone here. Um, I had to come over alone, and uh, the wife on the tube came later. And I was kind of I was watching. It was a strange period in my life where I I hadn't like I was alone in this completely new country, and I didn't I didn't really go out much because winter was starting up and what have you and I hadn't yet seen Enterprise and I hadn't yet seen the animated series so I thought hey I'm gonna catch up on my Star Trek and finish these shows and you know before I really start the channel I I want to at least have seen everything of course my memory is is garbage so I don't remember everything but at least I've seen everything and so I, I watched through all of Enterprise and the animated series was so amazing to me like I, I enjoyed Enterprise um, on a certain level, but for some reason the animated series really stuck out to me. And in that time where I was alone here, um, that was the warm blanket. It was it was it was nice to know that I could you know when I would have my meal, I could sit down and watch an episode of the animated series. Uh, it was a great show. It felt like it felt like um, Kirk and, and and the gang were back. Because it was them again. Um, it's just I basically missed out. I hadn't seen them mm-hmm. so long. Anyway, it was great. I loved it. <laughs> no, it, it, it's beautiful, and it kind of reminds me of my my journey as well. In, in a sense, I remember when I first moved to England, um, I, I turned in, I turned into Voyager um, a lot of time because um, so I was far away from home, I was missing um, family, missing friends. Well, they don't really have too much friends. To, <laughs> mm. um, or or maybe none. I don't even know anymore. But um, yeah, I, I I went into um, 
I went into Voyager quite a lot of times as well because it just somehow just got um, got the got the knowledge that hey, I'm basically just stranded in the other side of the globe, <laughs> from far from my family and, and far from everything that I know, and then I have to have to be resilient. And and um, Voyager came back in a in a second time, um, kind of saving me from you know getting completely insane or something it was was very very inspirational and it was really nice to uh, really nice to experience that again but it's funny when you said um animated series because i think when i started out my youtube channel i i'm the very first um, star trek series i i reviewed was the animated series because i never had watched it before i think it's 2016 when i was in a convention and i got the dvd for like 10 bucks or something and and i i did review it and i enjoyed it so much and it's it's it's, it's a brilliant tv show it is it's not the highest it animation amazing. it's not the highest animation quality um like especially con compared to today's standards but then i don't know i don't i don't know what the animation quality was like generally speaking in the 70s because you look I think at it's more like a scooby doo style is it you think is that is that the seventies though? Because I mean, if you look at, I, I talk about gargoyles because I'm rewatching it now. That's a nineties show, and it looks like, it, it looks like shit. Um, but it's the stories that count, right? Um, anyway, the animated series is great. It's one of my favorite Star Trek shows. <laughs> and what what is it? What what is it especially in the animated series that comforts you the most? I and in general, in Star Trek, uh, it really is the characters. I think. Because, like, the curiosity side of it is really, like, the stories or the planets that they go to, these, like, sci-fi uh, concepts um, that they get wrapped up in. But it, it really is the characters at the end of the day. Like, you, you go back and rewatch the shows because you like the characters and because, you know, mm -hmm. you have so much fun with them. That's it, mm -hmm. I think. I, I, I agree. I agree. I, I, as I told you... Um... I'm not sure if it was part of our um, podcast from the very beginning, or or it, or it was off off air. But um, when I watched this morning, um, Babel or Babel, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce the name <laughs> <laughs> from DS9, and um, I I literally overflown um, by by some really good emotions in the end when um, Quark was up in the ops and and telling Odo like, so now about my wage <laughs> when, when when Odo ejects the um, the ship and saves the station, and Quark was just like smiling at the and the ops, and it's like, okay, now let's talk about money then. Now, it's just, just <laughs> such a such a silly moment, but it it just so amazing to see these two characters and and just I, I I'm I'm just like over overjoyed about this one one single moment as well. Um, no, it's awesome, but you know, I do think about um. You know, like, like classic tracks and animated series Voyager, we uh, touched on. How do you feel about um, the new new shows, in terms of Kelvin movies, Discovery, or even Picard? Do do they give you the same level of comfort? And I'm not trying to be, um, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> divisive um, or going into um, different topics here. It's just the basic level of comfort that you get from from this show. Is it different that you get from like from the animated series or from Voyager? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't feel the same way. Um, well, Discovery has always, always been like an uphill battle for me. I, I, I really try and find what I enjoy with Discovery, but it's, it's just not a show for me. Um, uh, Picard was different. Picard, when Picard began, like the first few episodes, I was, I was really happy. But it, it's not the, it's not the warm blanket that you're referring to. It was more um, nostalgia. You know, it was like, oh, I, you know, we're going back to the data and what have you. And so it was it, like when we saw the Enterprise D, it was like, oh my goodness, it, it was more nostalgic kind of happiness. But um, you know, as far as the new shows, I don't, I don't feel that way yet. It, 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 it might not be. Um, it might not be a quality thing though. Like I, I often think about this. I often think that it's because these shows are new, right? Maybe, maybe um, in twenty-five years' time, um, I will feel that way about them. Once they've kind of settled into, like, into the, the the stone of Star Trek, and they are, you know, fully established as as shows, they they run their course and they're finished, and you know, maybe maybe I will enjoy them. Though to be honest, I don't I don't feel that way about Enterprise. 
Like I don't, I, I never go back to Enterprise and think, oh, yeah. I, I like the characters, um, but I don't, I don't feel as kind of content watching Enterprise. Mm -hmm. The Kelvin movies is a bit strange. Um, they have their own kind of identity. Yeah, they're fun to watch as well. I'm, but maybe, maybe except number two, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, into, into darkness that's, that's is a still... bit. It's still hard to digest a little bit. <laughs> um, it's it's on a different level though, isn't it? Because when I was watching Star Trek as a kid, I didn't know about actors, or didn't really care about who the actor was. It was all about the character. Like I, I if I had met um, Kate Mulgrew in the street, it wouldn't have been Kate Mulgrew. It would have been Captain Janeway. I'd be like, oh, it's Captain Janeway and la di da, and I. Uh, as a child, you kind of expect to meet Captain Janeway, and you kind of, I don't know, in your mind, you kind of expect to meet these people in character. Um, and so it was really about the, the characters, like Data, uh, Seven of Nine, what have you, whereas um, when the Kelvin timeline came along, I was, I was older, and it was more about the actors. And so I knew about Zoe Saldana, and I thought she was great. I knew about Chris Pine. I thought he was great. Um, I've been a fan of Carl Urban for years, and so I knew that Carl Urban was great. And so, it, 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 like every time there's a new Calvin timeline movie, I'm happy to see the like the actors reunited m more than I am the characters. Does that make sense? No, no it, it does. Yeah. So I, I and um, I, I love these actors, and John Cho was great. Uh, I think uh, I didn't know about Zachary Quinto. Uh, before the Kelvin timeline began, and um, that's yeah. funny because I, I think he was the only one who I knew about. Oh, really? And Zoe, Zoe Zaldana. But the only thing is because I think Heroes, um, he was in Heroes, oh, he played um, I, the um, villain Tyler. I haven't really watched it either, but I, I know he was in there and he was like scalping people. Um, uh, well, it was like. <laughs> cutting people head um off um on the top oh and then goodness. doing some it, it it was a crazy crazy show um <laughs> and it was a bit too much for my 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 digestive system so i i didn't really didn't really stick with the show but i know he was that was his first um i think that was his first big tv um role that kind of made him famous hmm. and um, zoe zaldana i think he, she came from avatar so that's why she was. Yeah, but she was in Pirates of the popular. Caribbean too. She oh yeah, that's small, She had a small role in Pirates of the Caribbean, and I, I loved her in that. I think Anton Yelchin, um, may he rest in peace, was one that I didn't know. Like I didn't know who he was. Neither um, did I. Yeah, I was. Simon wasn't, Pegg was. Um, yeah, Simon was Pegg. I love Simon for me. Pegg. And but you know, I'm gonna be honest. I was never. I've, I've never been sold on Simon Pegg, Scotty. I don't. I don't. I don't see Scotty. I see Simon Pegg, right? Um, but I love him. I love Simon Pegg. I think he's amazing. No, he is. And you know he was in Doctor Who as well. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, he was in Doctor Who. That was the first time when I seen him. And uh, funny, oh, really? I think it was just after when the 2009 movie came out and I started watching Doctor Who. I was like, that's hilarious. Seeing him in Doctor Who just... Well, <laughs> I think I, think I, think I saw him in, in those in what they call the Cornado Trilogy. You know that? Mm, uh, no. There's uh, three movies that are completely unrelated, but there's like Shaun of the Dead. Um, oh, I forget what movies they are, but anyway, there's like Shaun of the Dead. I think there's Hot Fuzz in there somewhere, and something else. There's another oh. movie about the end of the world where they 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 go oh, and yeah. drink. The, the world world's end. I think. Yeah, the world's end. I think it maybe it's just called. But anyway, this is like a considered a trilogy or whatever. But this is um, what's his name? Is it Nick Nick Frost? Nick Frost, Nick Frost yeah. and Simon Pig. That's where I, I, I like discovered Simon Pig. I was like, oh, he's, he's hilarious. I love this guy. <laughs> oh, he was in... Um, he did a voice in Ice Age uh, 3 as well. Did he? Yes, he he's... Buck? Yeah, he's Buck. He's that character with the with the, with the the eye patch. The eye patch. <laughs> this was the time yeah, where I, I very much enjoyed my Ice Age movies. <laughs> and you rewatched them recently with your daughter, right? Yeah, well, yeah. Everyone's kind of stuck at home. Um, and everyone's watching Trick, but I can't really <laughs> concentrate on Trick. Um, and I, you know, 
I, I don't want to stick her in front of a screen, but sometimes once you've played with all of the toys that are lying around and you're like, okay, we'll watch a movie. So I think, yeah, I've been watching movies that some, some I consider good, some I don't, but mm-hmm. just animated things that kind of, like we watched The Secret Life of Pets 2, which I don't think is a very good movie, but it's got, you know, dogs and turkeys and what have you. So she, <laughs> she watches that, she can sit down and she points at the screen, you know, uh, dog, yeah, <laughs> it's a dog. <laughs> God bless her. Yeah, it keeps her occupied for a little bit. Maybe on the queue. Yeah. <laughs> is there, is there, um, so in, in short, what would you say your warm blanket is when you think about Star Trek and, and what would you say the one thing that that makes makes your warm blanket up? Um, the characters feel like family. Really. Um, I, I keep on focusing on Voyager, but that's because like the, uh, all of the other shows I watched later on, I, I watched The Next Generation very early, but The Next Generation felt more adult. Like I don't know how to explain this. The Next Generation felt like a show with adults for adults, even though there was Wesley. But The Next Generation felt I felt I don't know I could relate more to the Voyager crew and and I don't know it just felt like a younger show. I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but anyway. So I keep on relating back to, to Voyager, but that's, yeah, it was really the characters felt like my family. And there is a very strong sense of family uh, in Voyager, where they're all, you know, together on this adventure, on this kind of mission to get home, right? Um, and so, yeah, like my, my warm blanket was just chugging on a TV show, like, you know, I have a, I have a bad day, at whatever, at school, at work, whatever. Um... You might not have you know, necessarily friends to talk to. You chuck these guys on. These guys are your friends. Hmm. Although they don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of the kind of the Reginald Barkley situation from. Yeah, from I, don't, I don't. I, I, I don't want to make it all sound like it's. it's <laughs> I don't want to make it sound like it's a sad thing. Like, oh my goodness. No, it's it's, it's not a sad. I don't think it's a sad thing. I mean, I mean, I, I would almost say between the two of us, but essentially a lot of people are gonna hear this hopefully <laughs> but um, I had the same same feeling I, I resonated a lot with Reginald Barkley and especially in in Voyager when mm. um, he was struggling to get into a new place and not having too much friends but working like the familiarity with his situation and my situation when I moved um, to England it was it was just just um, super familiar and I, I, I got this sense of um, realization that hey, um, it is maybe sad, but it gave me so much, um, so much to, to think about, and to accept that, not to accept, just to help me, in in those times when I had no one around. Mm. So I don't think it's a sad thing. <laughs> but I think that's what TV shows are there for, aren't they? Like yeah. in the end, like yes, it's the entertainment, the fun, the adventure, but it really is to, I don't know, it, it, they help you. They are. They really do. Is there anything that um, just um, for um, you know looking forward um, uh, on your channel, on your on your life? Is there anything that you're excited about right now, or or working on it at the moment? And hashtag when are those uh, racist videos coming again? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I want to do more racist videos. Is this that like I, actually? No, I've been real lazy this week. I suppose there was no re- uh, Picard to review. And well, I've decided to do episodes nine and ten as one review. So I was like, I'll just take a week off. Whatever. Too bad. I should have. I should have written a racist video. I should have done one. But too bad. I spent time with Baby on the two and watched Ice Age movies. Um, <laughs> that's what I did. Um, I don't know. Honestly, am I excited about what you mean, Star Trek things, or just in life in general? Star Trek things, general things, life in general. I'm excited to see Baby on the Tube grow up, honestly, because she's, I know it's corny, but she's getting um, kind of more advanced by the day, like she does more and more things, she's almost talking, what have you, and I can't wait till she gets to that age where we can start playing you know, board games together, stuff like that. Um, on the Star Trek front, I'm still hyped for Lower Decks. 
I want that animated show to come out. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm real excited about that. And, uh, yeah. I'm happy to do these videos on the channel. It, it takes up a lot of time, but I love doing them. I love doing them, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, Sean, thank you very much for joining me. And I really appreciate that you spent this time with me, sharing your thoughts with um, with me and essentially with my with my audience here. Um, it was really delightful. And for all of you listeners who got to the end of this, I was tuning in for the very first episode of Warm Blanket. Um, thank you. Thank you for having me. Check. <laughs> no, it was a pleasure, honestly. And um, um, if anyone from my listeners want to uh, find you, they can find you on YouTube over Track on the Tube, and of course in Twitter as well as Track on the Tube. Is there mm. anywhere else that they can find you? <laughs> Absolutely not. No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't do the Facebooks or the Instagrams. I'm just on YouTube and just on Twitter. That's. There it is then. YouTube is regular-ish videos. Twitter is like a constant, a constant feed of just me tweeting things. <laughs> and you're quite a, quite a part of the Starfleet Boy podcast as well yourself, so. Oh yeah, I, I people can yeah. also find you there. I often talk about what is it? <laughs> we often talk about the next generation mostly. I did a few Picard episodes, but mostly the next generation. Which would be fun to do as well. Mm. Well, again. Thank you very much for being here. It was it was lovely to um, to talk to you, and um, I'll look forward to um, to see everyone in the next episode. Live long and prosper.